Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be making a card inside and out, which I normally do, but this one kind of goes together. I finish off the sentiment on the inside of the card, and it's a little bit more of a cheeky card, so I thought I would share the video of how I made it. Now the outside of this card is going to be pretty simple. I've just got some cardstock here. I have a piece of pattern paper. This is just from my stash, and then from that pattern paper I pulled out a few different colors. So I have some green and some pink that I had scraps of in my cardstock collection, so I pulled those out. I also have a piece of white cardstock that is a panel that measures four inches by five and a quarter inch, and I will be using that scalloped edge die. Now you can see that my pink cardstock matches and my green cardstock as well, but that green cardstock, my daughter got a hold of and she drew across it. That's okay, I'm going to cover most of it up. So this is a way to use up those scraps that you might have something on that you really don't want to be seen. With that scalloped edge, I'm going to be die cutting my three panels. Now I want these all to be exactly the same, so I'm going to line them up and cut them all at once. This die is from Stampin' Up. It's the large scallop die. I'm not sure if they still have it. If they don't, and I can't link it down below, I will link something very similar. A lot of companies have these. If you wanted to, you could even get this with stitching detail or the piercing, paper piercing on it. There's really a lot of different scallop dies out there that you can play around with. You might even have one in your collection already. So to die cut these all the same, I'm gonna line them up one on top of the other, and I'm gonna run them all through my die cutting machine at the same time. I wanted to first get the die on my first piece of paper that's gonna be on the top, which is my plaid pattern paper. And then behind that, I'm gonna place my green. Now I went down below my die. I actually should have pushed it up. I fixed it in the end, it's not a big deal, but if you are going to make a card like this or use this technique, make sure you push it up. Also, my pink cardstock is too short to really do a whole piece here, so I'm gonna to have to cut it right in the middle. And what I do is I just line it up, make sure on the back that the die is all the way across the cardstock, and I have enough room on the top where I can add adhesive later on. I will run these through all at the same time. It's not gonna cut all three. It will cut the first two, but the third one is just going to have an indention, but that indention is going to allow me to pop that die right back into place on top, line it up and run it through so I know it's gonna match exactly. That's why I go ahead and run all three through at once, even though I know that it's not gonna cut that third piece of paper. If you have thinner cardstock, it might. Uh, chances are it probably won't, but you can always try. You can see I've got that great indention on there that I can pop that die right back into place. It fits like a puzzle piece. Put my painter's tape down and run this through. Now I have seen a few comments online about people having trouble with their painter's tape ripping cardstock. If you take your painter's tape, push it up against your shirt or um, a jacket or your pant leg, something with a little bit of lint on it, to get that off onto the paper and to take away a little bit of that tackiness and stickiness, that's going to allow your tape to release easier and not tear your paper apart. Now, if you put it through your die cutting machine, you've got to remember it's going to add pressure to that painter's tape and push it down even harder. So you don't want that much stick on it to begin with. Um, so just keep that in mind whenever you're running this through. I'm going to put together these three pieces just with some double-sided adhesive. I've got that panel in the top right hand corner that I thought this was going to go on. Just ignore that. <laughs> I thought it was going to go on that. I didn't like the way it turned out, so I changed my mind. I went ahead and cut a new white panel that is the exact same measurement, and I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the very bottom of this. Now this entire sentiment comes in one stamp. You can choose to cut this apart if you want to. I'm not going to do that with this one just because it is such a large stamp. I'm just going to do some selective stamping and some masking. So for the first part, I'm going to go ahead and mask, and I like to use painter's tape. You can also use post-it notes if you have those on hand. I just like painter's tape because I can kind of rip it and move it around the way I need it to go on my paper. I meant the ink on my stamp, but I think you knew what I meant. So I'm going to use painter's tape, and I just want to get ink on the Hey Mom portion of the stamp. So whenever I line this up in my Misty, I went ahead and used my creative corners in the top right-hand corner 
because I needed to bump that stamp away from the edge um, so it wouldn't run into the sides of my Misty. I went ahead and placed my painter's tape down and when I lined up that stamp, I made sure to line up just the Hey Mom portion of the stamp right where I wanted it. I am using Memento Rich Cocoa ink because it matches the brown in my paper instead of a black. I thought this would go with the color scheme better, so I grabbed out my brown ink for this. You can use whatever brown ink you have on hand to stamp this down. So I'm stamping that down in the bottom right hand corner. And like I said, make sure you remember just to line up the portion of the stamp you're actually going to use so it's not offset at all. I stamped that down a few times and then it was time to put this front panel together. So I went ahead and added some fun foam and double sided adhesive on the back of those scalloped edges that I glued together. And I'll just place that right along the very top of the card. I will go back and add a little bit more embellishment onto this in just a moment. But for now, I'm just going to pop this panel onto an A2 top folding card base and work on the inside panel of this card. Now, I'm going to be using alcohol markers to color on the inside of the card. That's why I did grab an extra panel. If you don't mind the color on the back, normally I don't. But because this is a Mother's Day card, I wanted to go that extra step and just take the time to really put a lot of thought into this one. So I went ahead and cut another panel. This one is the same size as the front. And it's actually the one that I missed stamped on. So I've got that stamping that I don't want on the back, but I didn't want to waste a whole sheet of cardstock or a whole panel of cardstock. So I'm just going to stamp on this and color. Now I want to continue stamping my sentiment on the inside, but because I have Hey Mom with the little apostrophe, or what is that called? It is a comma. I think I need to go back to school, but... Because I stamped that on the outside, I don't need to stamp it on the inside, so I need to mask that part off. I'm also going to be using two different inks on the inside. You can use one. I could have used just Rich Cocoa, Memento Rich Cocoa ink across the whole thing, but I wanted that black outline on the image I'm actually going to color. I just like the look of it, but it would have worked perfectly fine with the Rich Cocoa. I just, it's preference at this point. So I'm going to mask off that little poop emoji with some more painter's tape. And this is a little bit of a weird shape. So this one took a little bit longer and you need to do a little bit more finagling. So I use my fingernail to really press, it, press my painter's tape down into those crevices. Make sure it's not covering any portion of the stamped image that I want to get on my paper. And you can see my head because I look straight over that stamp to make sure I didn't have any painter's tape where I didn't want it and make sure I had it everywhere I did want it. Now I didn't go all the way across the stamp. I just went right around that poop emoji. So I did get a little bit of ink on just that tiny portion of the sentiment. I'll go ahead and clean that up in just a moment, but I wanna make sure I get a good layer of ink on this because I only wanna stamp this thing once. This was hard enough to mask off. I wanna get it with the first stamp. So I went ahead and peeled up that painter's tape once I was happy with the inking. I'm going to use a damp rag to go ahead and wipe away any ink that got where I didn't want it. And then I dried it with my finger very quickly and I'll go ahead and press that down. And because I'm using my Misty, I can just lift this right back up and I can ink up the rest of the stamp after I've cleaned it with my Rich Cocoa. I know I'm going to stamp it down in the exact same position so it lines up perfectly. Now, because I'm using a smaller one of the Dewdrop ink pads at this point, I really don't need to do any masking. I can just, if I get a little spot here and there, I can just go ahead and take my rag and wipe it away. I just use the very tip of this to ink up the stamp quickly. You can do this with smaller stamps. And if you don't have a really big area you need to mask off, it's super simple and easy to use those tiny ink pads. Now, I did get a little bit of ink right where the H is on the hay. That's okay. All I need to do is take my little sanding block. I got this one from Sally's, I believe. You can get them there or you can order them online. I'll leave a link down below. But I just use my sanding block to sand that away. You can also use your sand eraser, craft knife, whatever works for you just to get that ink up so it's not going to stay there. Now, once I had that kind of wiped away, the inside stamping was done. It was that simple. The only thing left to do is to color this image and add a little bit of embellishment. I'm using my Dick Flick Studio brush markers. Again, I'll leave a link to these down below. Um, 
they're just what I use. You can use any coloring medium you like. I just went ahead and stamped this on another panel because I knew everything was going to bleed through. So I did go ahead and make sure I had my coloring medium picked out so I could use the right inks and kind of plan ahead for it. I'm doing some very, very, very simple coloring. I am not a colorist whatsoever. So I went in with a lighter brown and then I'm coming in with a few darker shades just to add some shadow. And then I go back through and blend them out. It's that simple for me. So I don't think I mentioned it yet, but this image is from the Joy Claire Stamps Mother's Day stamp set. I have used this set before. I will leave a link to that video in the top right hand corner, but it is filled with different little images. Some of them are very, they're puns and it's, it's just a great cute little set. I seen this and I wanted to use it so bad. I wanted the outside to be very frilly and a traditional Mother's Day looking card, very beautiful. And then on the inside, you have this great little poop. And it says, thanks for putting up with my, we'll say poop here. Some may not read it that way, but that's the way I'm going to read it. But I think it's hilarious. So I thought it would be so funny to have a beautiful outside traditional Mother's Day card. And then on the inside, throw in this very unexpected greeting. Now I wanted to dress up the bottom since this is a simple card. So I'm going to take those same papers I used on the outside and I'll go ahead and do the same exact thing I did just without the scalloped. We're just going to use a straight edge at this point, line them up and put them on the bottom of the card with double sided adhesive. Now this is a great card if you have a very funny relationship with your mother. Um, this would be one my husband would give to his mom because it's just, it's a funny card and this would be something he would actually say. So <laughs> I think that's what makes it funny. I'm going to pop that on the very bottom of that panel and then I'm going to pop this on the inside of the card there you can see that back I went ahead and just used the same panel I had messed up on that I didn't like I didn't want to waste the card stock so I just colored on top of it and nobody will see the back of this it's just in the video so you've got that reusing going on in this card too which all mothers would appreciate right I'll go ahead and place some double sided adhesive on the back of that and then place it right on the inside of the card. And because I have that panel, none of my alcohol inks did bleed through to the back of the card. Now, because the outside of this is so simple with just that little Hey Mom sentiment, I am going to dress this up with a little bit of Nouveau Drops. These are in the gold color. I'm not sure the exact name. I'll leave a link down in the description box as well. But I'm going to pop a few of these little drops. I always like to test it before I go in on my card. I've learned the hard way why you should do that. I'll go ahead and pop a few of those just here and there. And if you ever get any little points on top, just give a little tap on your cardstock right next to that dot. And it should kind of level itself out if it doesn't do it on its own already. I know I've seen a few complaints about that as well. That's what works for me. You can also tap from underneath and that should level it out too. Now, I like to place a lot of these drops around just to give it a lot of shine. And because you do this, you do need to give it some time to dry. It takes about, uh, depending on how thick your drops are, mine probably took a good couple hours to get really good and hard and dry to where I knew it would be good enough to kind of put in an envelope. But once that was done, this card was completely finished. There's a look at the outside and then you open it up and you've got that great sentiment right on the inside as well. Here's another close up shot as well. Again, very beautiful, frilly, traditional Mother's Day on the outside and then a little bit cheeky on the inside. That does it for me. I'm going to leave a few different links on the left side of your screen you can click on. Make sure you hop along on this Mother's Day blog hop from Joy Claire Stamps. I will leave that link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.